It's been just over a month since that moment when the Parti Québécois celebrations were shattered after someone opened fire on election night. One person died and another was seriously wounded. Since then, the accused, Richard Henry Bain, has been receiving medical care at a detention centre awaiting trial. Those who know him say Bain appeared disturbed after he moved from the city to a country fishing lodge. The CBC's Ioana Romiliotis pieced together the months leading up to the crime Bain is alleged to have committed. La Conception, Quebec, a small, sleepy town where the hunting is good, so is the fishing. Anthea Rowe and her husband, Will Rounds, were in the area on a holiday in August. Catching a trout for dinner seemed like a great way to spend a morning. They went out with a guide named Rick. Oh my gosh, it, Rick was the person who um, shot those people. Not a lot of people know someone who's capable of that kind of violence. Yeah. It was a few days after the Quebec election when Roe and Rounds, back home in London, Ontario, made the startling connection. It has been a wild and at times frightening night in Quebec. Between the man in the bathrobe and balaclava arrested for opening fire at a Parti Québécois victory rally and the fishing guide they had spent hours with just two weeks before. It was um, disturbing to realize that we spent an intimate morning in an isolated location um, nobody knew where we were with a person who eventually was capable of extreme violence. That person was Richard Henry Bain, the amiable operator of a fishing lodge who boasted the best rates in town. In a promotional video, Bain offers to drive customers up a private road to a lovely lake by his lodge. Roe and her husband spent four hours with Bain in the middle of the lake. They say Bain ranted about politics the whole time. He felt it was a good idea to separate the uh, city of Montreal from the province of Quebec and that it should be an entity itself within Canada. And, uh, you know, that seemed like a kind of outlandish idea, obviously. At no point did we feel endangered. Uh, we never felt our lives were in danger when we, during the four hours we spent with him. No one could have predicted what was to follow. Two weeks later, Police say Bain packed five guns into his vehicle, including a semi-automatic rifle, and made the two and a half hour journey to Montreal. Pauline Marois' PQ had just won the election. There was a party at a nightclub downtown. It was nearly midnight when Bain arrived. Police say he parked his SUV in the back and made his way towards the back door and opened fire. Marois was hustled off the stage before he got inside, but not before one man was killed and another man injured, and the back door set on fire. As police hauled Bain away, he yelled out, the English are waking up. It's been just over a month. Bain is in the infirmary of this detention centre north of Montreal, facing 16 charges, including first-degree murder. Back in La Conception, his fishing lodge sign and his truck are gone. But people here are now looking back to try to find the trigger. Bain Chalet is about five kilometers up this private road. The few neighbors he had say there were troubling signs as soon as he moved up here three years ago. Claude David has known Bain for more than 30 years. David saw Bain the morning of the shooting when Bain dropped his truck off for repairs. David says Bain seemed calm, but he was still wary. There had been too many bizarre incidents over the years to not be. David says Bain was erratic, stockpiling food and supplies during the H1N1 pandemic a couple of years ago, telling neighbors they should all guard it against looters. Once, says David, Bain kept honking his horn in the middle of the night until alarmed neighbors ran outside. Then he asked for orange juice. Then there was the time Bain burst into David's home early one morning. It was 4 a.m. He opened the screen door and said he was there for breakfast. Come on, man. I've never invited anyone to my house for breakfast at 4 a.m. It was disturbing. David says for as long as he'd known him, Bain was taking medication for a mental health illness and that he even called Bain's brother to intervene when he seemed to have stopped taking it. 
And there were other things that scared the David family even more. Bain would often fire rounds on his property in the middle of the night, and he had a huge gun collection. When Bain moved up here, a few of us helped him move his things. There were cases of guns and cases of bullets. I'm a hunter and I have guns, but he had a lot, a lot of guns. David says his family called provincial police twice to complain. Nothing came of those calls. Police refused to comment when we asked if they had ever had Bain in their sights, saying they could not discuss an active investigation. Troubling signs, even dangerous ones. But Bain had another side too. At a local pub, the Scot, as he was known, was a jovial, kilt-wearing regular who usually spoke French. And despite his outburst about the English waking up the night he was arrested, waitress Mary Machette says he never seemed to have a problem with francophones. We were surprised. First, we didn't believe it. But the moments once we seen it on TV, it's, well, it's for real, it's him. But no, we didn't believe it. Why didn't you believe it? Because we couldn't believe that he could have done, he could do something like that. He was, he was a good, nice person, very kind, generous. Never seen him being angry or... Bain did seem to have a pretty ordinary life before. He was a foreman at this copper refinery in East End, Montreal, for 30 years. And there's no record, a spokesman told us, of any disturbing behavior. Bain was also in a long-term relationship that he broke off suddenly before he retired and moved up north. We found Bain's former partner. She refused to do an interview, but told us she knows the man she was with and that she was stunned to hear he's the accused election night shooter. What is clear, once he left Montreal in 2009, Bain became increasingly political and increasingly frustrated, and it was all linked to his fishing lodge. Bain was lobbying the provincial government to sell him the crown land it was on, and he was flooding town hall with requests to turn it into an ice fishing lodge and an outfitter's campground. He was turned down every time, but kept coming back, says La Conception's mayor, Maurice Plouffe. He was very insistent, would repeat the same request over and over again. He always had the same tone, very forceful but polite. And Bain was increasingly hopeful, it seemed, that a liberal victory for Jean Charest was the answer. So his plan was to get a lot of voters in North to vote for Charest by having uh, him grant them their crown land that they lived on. Did you get a sense that he was expecting that to go his way? Uh, I think he was very hopeful because he had all this money invested in his property. Did Bain see a PQ victory as an obstacle? Did he reach for his guns in a moment of madness? That will be clearer when his trial begins. His lawyer would only tell us Bain has been assessed and is not well. For David, though, there was never any question how it would end. My brother and I would always say it won't end well for him. I often thought he would do something to himself, not to others. And Joanna joins us now in studio. So Joanna, it seems clear he had some mental health issues. How on earth did he get his hands on all those guns? Well, we know Bain had a license. What we don't know is what he divulged in his application process. And there is a question specifically in the application form that asks people if they've ever suffered from emotional problems, behavioral problems, any form of mental health issues. If that person checks yes, and less than 1% of applicants do, automatically enhanced screening kicks in, the RCMP investigates, and decides on a case-by-case -case basis if this person should have a license and in fact the majority of people who do check yes on that box do go on to get a license hmm. only in the more severe cases are they refused outright but we don't know what he said on the application we don't know because it's private but we do expect it may turn up on his trial and, and we'll have a clearer picture then thanks so much Joanna you're welcome Joanna Romeliotis